Hello, and welcome again to the Quality Improvement Training Series. This is the series on root cause analysis techniques, helping identify causes and solutions. This is the third video in this series. The first video focused on preparing to do a root cause analysis, and the second focused on the root cause analysis strategies of brainstorming, affinity diagrams, and cause and effect, or fishbone diagrams. Today, we will focus on the five whys and the why tree. The five whys is perhaps the most famous of the root cause analysis strategies. It is a simple problem solving technique that helps to get to the root of a problem quickly. It involves looking at any problem and drilling down by asking why or what caused this problem five times. You use it to understand the causes of a problem. Some benefits are that it is easy to use and understand. It is fairly straightforward. It is a good tool to understand the cause of a single event, defect, or aspect of a problem. However, some challenges are that it can lead to linear thinking about causes and solutions, and may be too simplistic for complex or systemic problems. Let's look at the problem that most nights my kids forget to brush their teeth and do the five whys. Why do most nights my kids forget to brush their teeth? Because they don't like brushing their teeth. Why do they not like brushing their teeth? Notice that instead of simply asking why, I ask the full why do they not like brushing their teeth from the previous response. This will help a group narrow down their answer. Why do they not like brushing their teeth? Because they are tired. Why are they tired? Because it, is, because it is the end of a long day and they have their pajamas on. Why do they have their pajamas on? Because they are supposed to get their pajamas on and then brush their teeth. Why are they supposed to get their pajamas on and then brush their teeth? Because that is our routine. So that takes us to the end of five whys. At the end of the five whys, you should have the root or roots identified. And you can further validate this by asking the question, if you removed or addressed or fixed this root cause, would this event or problem have been prevented? So let's check that here. If our routine is fixed, could this problem be prevented? Well, maybe that sounds like a pretty good solution. So let's try it. Now let's look at a problem that is closer to the work you do every day. The problem is Mary fell in the bathroom yesterday. Let's go through the five whys. Why did Mary fall in the bathroom yesterday? Because she lost her balance. Why did she lose her balance? Because the floor was slippery. Why was the floor slippery? There was water on the floor from somebody using the shower. Why was there water on the floor from the shower? because the shower curtain is too small and water leaks out and people forget to mop up the water. Why is the shower curtain too small? Because we bought the wrong size. That takes us to the end of the five whys. Again, we will ask if this problem or this um, solution is implemented, that if the wrong size shower curtain is fixed, could this problem be prevented? This feels a little too simplistic, but maybe it could help address the problem. We can certainly change it. However, because this feels too simplistic, we might want to also consider a more in-depth root cause analysis. And that takes us to our why tree on the next section. Let's talk about the why tree. A why tree can help explore a problem with multiple direct causes and multiple causes of each of those causes. It's basically doing the five whys, but with branches. 
First, you would identify the issues that were the direct cause of the problem. For each one, you would then ask why. And for each identified cause, you would ask why until you run out of questions. The benefits of this are that it can give you a more realistic picture of causation, and it can lead to identifying multiple possible solutions. However, it can be overwhelming to approach the problem in this way. It can get quite detailed if you have many branches. Let's look at a why tree for the problem that most nights my kids forget to brush their teeth. First, we will have asked the question, why do my kids forget to brush their teeth? And our first response was, because they're tired. If you recall, this was also the first response when we did the plain old five whys. But now we ask, why else do they forget to brush their teeth? And we arrive at a few additional direct causes, because they don't like it, because they simply forget, and because they feel like it's not important. So for each of these, we then continue to ask why. So this first here here for because they are tired, we arrive again at the root cause that our routine is that they get their PJs on, they don't want to get out of bed to go brush their teeth. But we also arrive at some other um, root causes, like they don't like the bubblegum flavor, and because we all forget and we're all tired, and because um, they have other things that they prefer to do. So can this help you identify some other solutions and changes that you could try? Now let's look at doing a Y tree for the problem statement that Mary fell yesterday in the bathroom and hit her head. By asking the first why, we will have identified that the main reason is because she lost her balance. Then we will further ask why to identify reasons that she lost her balance. You will see that the first box here on the left, we've identified the first why is because the floor was slippery. Then we have asked, why else did she lose her balance? And we've identified some additional direct reasons. Because she takes multiple medications that can make her dizzy, because her foot got caught on her loose robe, because there was no handrail, and because there was not a direct service professional available to help her. In the previous example of using the five whys, you will see on the left hand here, we have arrived at the same root cause of buying the wrong size of the shower curtain liner and it not being replaced. But by doing the Y tree and identifying additional direct causes, we have also um, identified other potential opportunities for solutions, such as perhaps we need to help Mary um, have a better fitting robe or properly tie the robe that she has. Perhaps we need to um, raise some more urgency around the issue of getting the handrail repaired very soon. And finally, perhaps we need to explore um, DSP turnover issues to make sure that there are staff available to help individuals who need um, additional assistance. That brings us to the end of the information for today's video on the five whys and the why tree. We hope you found it useful and that you stick with us and check out the next video focusing on check sheets, histograms, and the Pareto chart. Here are some resources that you can use to learn more about the topics covered in this video.